Hi, my name is Angel Awotaria, former Big Brother Naija season three housemate. I am a filmmaker and tech entrepreneur amongst many things, musician also, and um, I like books. Yes, I like a book. <laughs> How did I know about Big Brother Nigeria? Um, I used, I watched the last season, just bits and pieces. I'm, I've been familiar with Big Brother for a while, but I never really watched it because I, I wasn't much of a TV person. I wouldn't lie, I wasn't much, much, much of a TV person. But last season was interesting, and um, I got interested, and I was like, okay, ah, it would be nice to be on this show. I said it to a friend and his wife. So one day I was at home, and I received, I was tagged in the message, and as on Instagram, and I see Big Brother auditions from the same couple I mentioned it to the year before. So they're like, and the wife now calls me, and she's like, Baba, you have to go for this thing. I'm like, ah. I say, okay, now I'm going to try. That was it. I went for the auditions, and what do you know? I got in the house. Well, um, the opening ceremony for me was a bit of a blur because I was blindfolded mostly. I didn't see, we didn't see each other till we were on stage. That's how great the Big Brother program was. We had, none of the housemates saw each other throughout the entire preparation process. The team was amazing. Anyway, so when I got there, I saw a lot of people, the, the noise, the cheering. I saw Ibuka. It was overwhelming. So I had to even use the hats to cover my face a bit, just so I would look like, you know, I had it all together, but I was overwhelmed. I got into the house. I saw a couple of people I already knew, which made the transition a bit easier. And I was able to just mix up with people. I mean, there was food on the table and nobody wanted to eat. I, mean, I was like, oh boy, what would chop food? Hungry they catch us, you know? Everybody com kept complaining they were hungry and nobody wanted to eat the food. So Big Brother has not said anything. I was like, if this is only going to make them come on to me, you'll buy the good chop. And while I was eating, Big Brother says some other housemates were evicted. So it was very disorienting. And Toby left his belt in the house and went out. So while I was trying to sleep at night, I couldn't sleep because whenever I woke up, I would see Toby's belt. And it was like a memento mori. And I was like, yo, six people just come out now, now, now. You know, it was, so it was, it was, it was a very hectic and traumatic first day, but... We were able to scale through. My first week was um, hmm, first week was a bit of a struggle, meeting so many different people from so many different backgrounds with so many different interests. Very few had shared interests with me, so it was a problem. But lucky for me, there were a lot of music people inside. I had my guitar, so I was able to use music as a medium to integrate with the rest of the house. And so I started seeing people who liked the sort of stuff I liked, Bam Bam, Rico, and some other people. So the first week, first week was a bit heavy. Even the, the party was a bit of a hassle for me because I'm not so much of a party person. But it was fun. It was okay, great. So what was your strategy in getting to Big Brother House? Getting to Big Brother House, my strategy was pretty simple. Uh, go there, be yourself, sell yourself, come home with the money. I was paired with Ifu Enada, awesome female, awesome girl, very strong, really smart, liked music too, so there was a lot for us to vibe on. So that was the, um, the pairing situation. I liked, uh, I liked a lot of people in the house because I was just getting to know them, and generally I don't dislike people, even till now. I, I think I lack the ability to hate or dislike people. I just like you or I'm indifferent about you. So I liked pretty much everybody in the house. Up until I didn't, then I did again. <laughs> okay, well, let me be very honest here. I'm not the kind of person who likes crowds. I don't like to be around a lot of people in the sense that I feel when there's too much, too many mental, I don't know how to put it to, if there's too much mental energy, eh, the waves are just clashing with my own. I feel I have this... I don't know, I won't call it claustrophobia. I just don't like crowds. So I like to be with small groups of people. Small groups, small groups. Now, if a, if a group I have already interacted with is the only group I feel I can interact with, the next thing I'll do is to go and play my guitar. And I get very edgy when I haven't listened to music for a while. I, I, I like to think I have a music addiction. So the only escape I have from my problems, the reality of my situation, my stress, is to sing and play. Sometimes I would just play. And it's weird because my voice was cracked for like three weeks plus. 
So I couldn't even sing as much as I would have liked to, but the guitar was my escape. It made living in isolation bearable because I'm an outdoor person. I like to be outdoors, which is why most of the time I was either at the hammock or by the jacuzzi, just chilling for next to no reason because I like the outdoors. I like fresh air. I'm not much of a house person. I think my confidence was misunderstood by people both in and outside the house. I do not have confidence in my abilities. I have confidence in the fact that I know that my life is going to be beautiful regardless of what life throws at me. It's more, it could be precognition in the sense that I know that I did not come here to have a horrible life. Happiness is a product of your mind, not your state of being. So I always choose to be happy, to be confident, and to enjoy everything I do, living life one step at a time. People, some people misunderstood that for pride, for arrogance, and I'm really sorry I, I sent that message. Miscommunication is not uncommon in situations like this. I'm really, really sorry, but it had nothing to do with any of that. It had nothing to do with myself. Okay, so most me. I feel that what really made me relevant in that house uh, was the fact that I could make an attempt to connect with everybody. I would make an attempt to connect with Alex, whom I have nothing in common with. I would connect very well with Teddy, whom I had lots of musical connections with. I would associate with Ifu through exercise, with Toby through workout and fitness. I was able to connect with everybody individually. I think that's why people sought my opinion, because they knew that in me they could find a part of themselves, me being an all-rounder. But I don't think the knowledge had anything to do with my stay in the house. I feel that people just had confidence in the fact that they would see something, a bit of themselves in me. Okay. Well, CC. Um, the last week I spent in the house, Sissy and I got rather close. I don't know how much of it you saw. And we decided that we were, I was going to help her work through some of her problems. She was going to help me work through some of my problems. So I was always talking to her, helping her control her anger and her rage. It got to a point where Sissy and I almost had a fight. And I just made a simple hand gesture. The hand gesture was this, as in, don't cross that line. And Sissy just... Surprisingly, she just arranged herself and I arranged myself and we stayed on the bed and we reconciled immediately. So it was, it was really beautiful. And when we spoke later, we were laughing and I told her it was really, really nice. I enjoyed it because if Sissy would have gone into a war of words with me, I would probably have wanted to react because I was really edgy. I was really edgy that week. I would have reacted and I would have probably said things that we could never come back from. But I'm happy that it never got to that. So personally, I don't care what anybody is saying about Sissy. Sissy is trying her best to be a better version of herself, I suggest people just let her. I love CC. CC is my friend, and I believe that CC, like everybody else, has issues. That doesn't make her a black sheep. People should not try to witch hunt her. I take that very personally. Yeah, now the thing about the gossiping, eh? My partner and I were facing some sort of heat that my partner was uncomfortable with, and I believe that was the cause. So most of those conversations I was having, my partner knew about them because the plan was to redirect attention, throw people off. I like to call it sleight of hand. You push people, push people in one direction, then we push them in the next direction. Most of those conversations were all planned. My partner and I, I'm surprised that most of the, the conversations we had were not even aired because when I came and I started seeing comments, I was confused because my partner and I had discussed these things. Like the time I would tell, someone would ask me and I'm like, mm, I think I beg, forget that one. She knew about it because we had discussed it. The whole Rico injustice, it was becoming too much and it was, it was weighing her down. And I said, you know what, I'll put my head on the chopping block and be the bad person in the situation because I can take it. I, I expected that the viewers would see all of that and the housemates would not. But I'm surprised that even the viewers did not see that. And I came out and people were saying, oh, I'm a gossip. I don't even talk in the house. Most of the time I'm sleeping, on, I'm lying on the hammock or by myself with the guitar. I don't talk so much. But apparently people only saw when I was talking, which is fine. But most of that, you can ask Anika, you can send the idea, man. I'm pretty sure she will corroborate my story. She was aware of most of those conversations, those with Teddy A, with Toby. It was an attempt to remove attention from her. Well, personally, I have a small saying that I like to repeat. I don't defecate in my kitchen, and I don't eat in my toilet. 
those places are meant for what they're meant for. Now, if it's called a strategic partnership, then it's a partnership, not a marriage. I don't see why I should be hugging you, cuddling you, kissing you, or doing whatever when it's supposed to be a business partnership. I'm a businessman. I'm an entrepreneur. And I don't think I, don't think I would want to be cuddling or kissing anybody I'm working with. It doesn't make any sense because emotions get in the way of business and it ruins things. Take it from someone who's an entrepreneur. So I don't mix business and pleasure. It's not something I would want to do. So it, when it became strategic partners, I am my strategic partner, my strategic partner and I were very, very strategic. If we're not an I had no personal indignation whatsoever. We kept it like that. I think I was my friend and a girl that I was crazy about, which I never ha hid. Now, she and I became partners. And we had to become more of friends than anything else. After all, I was not even asking her out if I was not even trying to be her boyfriend in the house. So it was easy for us to make, for us to make that decision. It was easy for me to make that decision. And everything we did, everything I did, talking to people, all of that was strictly strategy. Because, I mean, she was under a lot of heat, a lot of pressure, and I believe largely it was because of me, and I'm sorry about that. I've apologized to her time and time again. So that's why I took the pain upon myself. You know, why am I talking to all these people? Usually, do I even gist with them? Let's be honest. You all watch the show. If you're not talking money or one educative thing, I'll go and sit down and sleep or music or movies. Do you understand? But I had to start having these conversations just so that I can sway people's minds, take the heat from her, put the heat on myself. Because I already got some, some people calling me polygamist. Anybody who watches very well will know I had eyes for just one person in that house and it never changed. Who was the person? It was Anika. Regardless of what I did. Regardless. And I say it, everything I did was in an attempt eh, to protect my friend from harm. And I, I'm sorry if some of it backfired and some people feel, people, a lot of people felt that it contributed in getting us evicted. I disagree, but be that as it may, I am actually very sorry and I had no intention. What am I gossiping people for? Is he giving me money? I like money, oh. Ah. My answer to those two questions and who would I like to win, I'm adding that as the third question, is one person. Rico Suave. He's my friend. He's my brother. I love him. I love him so, so, so much. And I hope that um, Nigerians would see that he's a genuine person. He's honest. He's nice. He's a bit of a weird cat. You know, he's kind of, uh, you, know, uh, and, you know, the white boy thing, you know, come out too much these days. But he is a genuine person. And I feel people should support Rico Suave. Personally, he has my full support. That's it.